Starting over here where I am, furthest over to your left, this is May, she's got the blue ball. Maggie in the middle actually has two red toys. And then furthest over to your right, uh, this is Tula. Tula has a small red toy and also two blue flipper tags. So that's a really good way uh, to identify Tula. Now what we're doing here with these toys, if you watch how the otters are manipulating them, actually if you look under the water, uh, for a, well, for a second there, um, oh, oh, yeah, or the, you'll see the otters rolling around, and uh, May was actually uh, knocking that toy up against the uh, wall there. Now, this is simulating how the otters would be uh, interacting with shells out in the wild. Oh, and it looks like we've got Tula coming up here on the deck. Uh, now, we asked uh, Tula to come up on the... Um, uh, the deck here, and so she's getting some tasty food, uh, thanks for that, and uh, Tula is actually, as you can see here, munching on a, a, a few pieces, it looks like just kind of white stuff, it's actually chopped up clam meat, and now the uh, two otters out here in the middle, May and Maggie, it looks like they finished their toys, so they're paying attention to their trainers again. Now, like I started to say, the uh, toys are simulating the um, natural shelled animals these otters would eat in the wild, so clams and crabs, uh, as well as you know oysters, abalones, shrimp, all sorts of things. Unfortunately, the hard shells don't interact very well with our windows, so instead of breaking the windows, we give them the plastic toys. Now we're doing something interesting here uh, with May up on the rock. She's come, down, come out on the deck and is up high and the trainer actually is touching her mouth with two little target sticks. They're actually toothbrush. Uh, and she is using those to signal uh, to May that she wants to check her teeth, to look inside her mouth, see how she's doing there. Uh, and so after uh, doing that, after focusing on those little toothbrushes and opening her mouth, allowing the trainer to check her, uh, she gets a big pile of food. Now what we're doing here is uh, it's called positive reinforcement. Essentially, we ask the otter to do something. If they do it, we make sure something they like happens in return. And our otters absolutely like food. So we've got clam meat. We also have some chopped up shrimp in the buckets, and shrimp is their favorite. Uh, there's also some uh, squid as well. Okay, now May has uh, moved into a little pool of water in the deck. If you uh, can't see her from where you're standing, look up in the uh, monitors. She just uh, dove underwater to come out of that little pool of water. It's a uh, nicknamed our spa, but it's not a spa at all. The waters uh, that our otters live in is actually pumped straight in from the ocean, so it's pretty chilly, about 53 degrees today. Uh, so that wouldn't really be hot tub temperature. To keep the otters warm, well, they have very thick fur on their bodies about one million hairs on every square inch. Now for comparison, an entire house cat tends to have a million hair on their bodies. Uh, most humans have, oh, about 200 hairs per square inch, whereas the otters have a million. So their thick, thick fur is actually dense enough the water cannot penetrate to their skin. That's what's keeping them warm and dry. All right, now May is being sent around to the different windows there. You can see her uh, traveling from one spot to another. Now what's happening here isn't very difficult for the otters to do. They can certainly swim from one point to another, but the fact that they don't know what's going to happen next provides them with a lot of mental stimulation. Our otters here kind of know what's going to happen next in their day. Uh, they know they're going to get plenty to eat and they don't have to worry about any predators. So instead we do these training sessions to give them something interesting to do. Uh, so because it's all unexpected, then they can watch the trainer and have to react to whatever uh, we do. Okay, now we've actually got something not happening with Maggie there. She has her toy and she's actually hitting the window. Now that's the exact reason we're not giving her a hard shell, but it's great to see that natural behavior in action. Otters are one of the few animals out there that do use tools. Uh, in the wild, they'll keep a favorite shell or stone uh, in their armpit and use that to crack open the shell of the animals that they want to eat. So very cool. Looks like uh, Maggie was finally able to shake out the last of her food there. So she seems pretty happy about that. She might pound it a little bit more. Uh, but also, as you're watching the otters float here, you notice how they keep seem to seeming to go to their backs? It's not just a stereotype or that they like their backs better. That thick fur I was talking about is actually thicker on their back. It's going to be the thinnest on their paws. Their paws are very dexterous, so they can feel around on the bottom and find the food they want to eat and manipulate those objects to get the meat out. So they're very clever animals and have very dexterous paws. Uh, so an otter who's resting is going to want to keep their paws out of the water just like Tula was doing here. She had her paws sticking up over her chest and they want to float on their backs. Now, <laughs> okay, we're, uh, we're doing something a little bit interesting here. You notice that uh, uh, Maggie has been kind of distracted with her toy and the trainer is trying to bring her back to work on something. Uh, but because what we're doing with positive reinforcement, Maggie doesn't get in trouble uh, because uh, she's not listening. Uh, we're going to ignore things that um, she's doing on her own and only give her uh, uh, reinforcements for things that we are asking to do. But she'll get, yeah, she's still got food that she's working on that's getting a little bit 
uh, stuck, it sounds like, actually. Uh, so it looks like we gave her a very difficult puzzle to work with. Uh, but you can see she's very determined to get her food out. Actually, it's a lot of fun to watch her there with her head, you know, practically underwater as she's uh, going through the effort of uh, knocking the food out. Uh, let me uh, talk about what's happening here with uh, uh, May a little bit. It uh, looks like we gave her another piece of food as well. Uh, but when the uh, trainer is working with her there, you know, she's right up close and she's in what we call the station. Each otter has a certain station so that they know which trainer they should be listening to at any point. Um, all right, now it looks like the rest of the food is coming out in the big jackpot for our otters to enjoy. Uh, you'll see them uh, collecting that and munching on it. Uh, it looks like uh, May's coming back here to uh, uh, see if she can have a little bit of that as well. Uh, and uh, watch for the otters to kind of tuck that up against their chest. They use the loose fur on their chest uh, to hold it tight to their bodies so they can hold on to it as they spin around in the water. Uh, now folks, uh, uh, there's actually something you can do to help otters like this out in the wild. Uh, that thick fur I mentioned is very important for an otter to survive, and you can protect a sea otter's fur by taking your car to a car wash when you wash it. When you wash the car in the driveway, a lot of road oils and motor oils get washed off and go into the street. The only drains in our streets are storm drains which go unfiltered into waterways. That oil can get on a sea otter's fur. If you take your car to a car wash, they have filtered drains, which will keep that motor oil from getting out to our oceans. Thank you folks very much for joining us. Myself and one of the trainers will be coming to the upstairs balcony to answer any questions you might have. Have a great day here at the aquarium.